Hello everybody, welcome to today's new and updated Love of Horror Care video. As a lot of you probably know, I have already done a video on Love of Horror Care before, and it did quite well, it did really well actually for my channel, and a lot of people um, asked a lot of questions, and I thought I'd make a new updated video on my you know, modern day practices from that time to this time on um, how to look after Lofa 4, what I do differently, what I do the same, just my basic care guide for Lofa 4. Um, you do, I encourage you to do research yourself as well for this wonderful plant. Um, I encourage you to experiment for yourself. There are lots of different factors that work for different people. They don't work for other people. Uh, this is just a basic care guide what's worked for me and that is important that you just you listen to this is just what this is just what worked for me some people um will have different experiences so again i encourage you to do some research and experimenting for yourself so first of all i'm going to start with soil so i'm going to list the basic ratios for my soil that I use for Lofa Fora. Um, so I'm going to list my ideal race ratios and my ideal ingredients for soils first, and then my less ideal, more cheap and easier to source version. It still works well, just not quite as well as the first one. So I'm going to list the now. The first ratios for soil on cacti and succulents, not cacti and succulents, in Lophophora in general, what works for me is a ratio of one part horticultural grit sand. One part horticultural grit. One part, half a part, I mean, sorry, um, loam based soil. So John Inns number two, I use in the UK. Um, but if you don't live here, just any loam based soil works pretty well for me. Then there's half a part worm castings. Um, then half a part fine pumice. Half a part coarse pumice. And one part perlite. So I hope you got that down. Um, that is what works for me as an ideal, not ideal I suppose, but what works for me the best that I've used so far. And all those ingredients are reasonably easy to, to find. They aren't, they aren't off the charts expensive. Um, but then now I'm going to list a more basic, cheaper, easier to source sort of soil that doesn't work as well, but it definitely works. and. Hopefully it works for you as well. It's always worked for me pretty well, just not quite as good. So now I'm going to list just three ingredients that you can use for the more basic soil, which is two parts horticultural grit sand, one part loam based soil. Again, John Inns number two is great if you're from the UK. For any other place that happens to sell it, I'm not sure if they sell them anywhere else. Or just loam based soil. So that's one part loam based soil. And then the final ingredient for the more basic mix is two parts perlite. And that is it. That's it for the second one, and it works pretty well. So I hope that does reasonably well for you. Um, one very important step that I used to take for granted, and a lot of people still do, is not sterilising their soil. I know it sounds really awkward thing to do, just just a bit of a stupid thing to do, um, but trust me when I say this, I've had so many problems of not sterilising my soil that I could have easily avoided if I just stuck the soil in the microwave for three, four minutes. So I'll teach you how to do that really quick. So first you just want to spray or add a little tiny bit of water to your soil mix that you're about to sterilise. Not much, it should not be wet, it should not even be, it should just be slightly moist. 
enough for the radiation to heat up the water molecules. So you're just going to add a little bit of water, mix the soil mix up well in a little microwave proof bowl or glass bowl that's microwave proof into the microwave. Now you're going to set it to four minutes. I used to do two minutes. Um, I realise that's not really enough, I don't think. So you just turn the microwave as normal on full power and microwave for two minutes. Then pause the microwave and mix up with a sterile spoon the rest of the mix and just churn it up so you you know it gets an even cooking. Then you're going to place the, it back in the microwave and uh, for another two minutes until the two minutes has gone and then you've got sterilized soil. Make sure you let it thoroughly cool down before you add it to your cactus pot. You don't want scalding hot superheated soil on your lophophora. That is not a good idea. So just don't don't do that. Definitely don't do that. So now you've got sterilized soil, you can use that as long as it's cooled down. You can use that for your lophophora. It usually works very well for me. And I hope it works for you as well. The next factor that we're going to be talking about is water. Now water is just as much of an equally um, important part of growing Lophophora um, and any cactus really, but especially um, some really water sensitive plants like the genus Lophophora. So first we're going to talk about the types of water. What can you use? Now, you can use, there's three types of water basically you can use. You can just use distilled and deionized water. You can use tap water. You can use rain water. And you can use bottled water. Now, all four of these methods will work okay for keeping um, Lophophora with some kind of exceptions. There's different complexities, different water types. The first most simple one is tap water. You get it from your tap and just pour it on. This is what I've used for my plants for ages. Now I'm not sure if this would work for everybody because I walk, I live in quite a soft water area of the UK. It's um, I've got very soft water here, so there's a lot less mineral build up um, with our water. So. I'm not sure if that's a factor, but in general, tap water should be okay for your um, for your plants. Now, don't boil the water if you've got hard water and you want it to go soft, because it won't it won't go soft. It might remove the chlorine, but it will only concentrate the minerals inside of the water even more. That's all it will do. It'll boil away the water and leave a more concentrated amount of minerals in the back. So you might want to remove some chlorine. I don't think chlorine ever... I don't, I'm not sure chlorine ever really bothers plants. Like Lophophora, it's normally always fine for me. Then there's distilled and deionized water. Now this is water which I don't use, but some people do, and some people have success with it. The only thing I'm concerned with, with deionized water and distilled water is the fact that, with humans at least, if you drink loads of distilled water or double distilled water, you're not going to be healthy afterwards because what it does is it's so pure it actually draws out all the some, all the minerals in your blood. That's literally how, how pure that, that water is. So I'm not sure if it does the same thing for plants. That's all the that's just the concern that I'd have if watering my plants distilled water or deionized water. So it's really, um, it's really your risk. You can do a bit more research on that. I'm sure it'd be fine if you did that. Um, but yeah, you know, you should probably do a bit of research on that one. Then there's rainwater, which is a very popular method to use for any plants, including cacti and succulents and lophophora. Now, for Lophophora or any cacti, I don't use rainwater unless it's been boiled. 
And the reason is, with rainwater, it can contain uh, pests and diseases. It's not pure distilled water. It, it might still have impurities and little bits of life forms that are swimming around in it. So I'd boil it. If I were you, I'd boil it. Um, just give it a quick boil in a pan, and then you can give it to your your um, your plants uh, as long as it's cool cool again. You don't want to scold your plants. That's not a good idea. So now we are going to be talking about bottled water. And I'm pretty sure in its basic form, bottled water is pretty safe to use for your lophophora. Um, I don't know why you would use it personally. I'm not sure if there's too much mineral content in bottled water. Um, again, you can do a bit of research on that one, but tap water has always worked for me. Tap water or boiled rainwater, I'd say, are the two best factors for it. Now we're going to do the next part of it, which is light. Now light for Lophophora is a very very thing between growers that some people use a lot of light some people use hardly any light not hardly any less light and shade it a bit so it really depends if you want to hard grow your plants so hard grow is closer to the wild more intense um, stressful conditions that will sometimes actually give better colors on your plants if you just want to grow them like they are in the wild then that's the way to go and the soft growing of plants, probably a bit shadier, a bit easier conditions, basically how um, basically how I'm living right now, that I'm lucky enough to live, is soft grown environment. So I get food when I want it, I if I'm too hot then I can just go in the shade, if I'm too cold I can just go inside. Basically a very spoiled cactus. Um, which is really divided in what you what you want. It's just up to what you want for your plant. You could grow them soft grown and have almost perfect show grown plants. Almost just completely clipped and brushed and sweeped and washed and stuff. Um everything perfect. Just treat it like a king or a queen or something. And then there's um hard grown plants, which I like a lot actually. I think they're quite underrated, but it's really your opinion. With a hard grown plant, you're going to want to give it very intense light, just like in the wild. Not too intense, like where you've got like eight layers of lenses on top of it and you're concentrating a beam of light into the middle of it. I don't mean that, just direct sunlight. You're going to want to give it a lot of hours of sunlight if you can. Maybe even some extra lights at night as well. Not at night altogether, but I've got lights here, and you can just shine it directly onto them if you're hard growing your plants. Then the soft growing your plants, just a southern windowsill, a south facing windowsill will do absolute wonders. You can even just shade it a bit um, if it gets too sunny for a soft growing plant, maybe with a sheet of paper or bubble wrap works well as well. Uh, greenhouse shading. Um, that's good for a soft grown plant if you if you want to protect it from the more intense parts of light if you don't want too much UV light going onto your plant. The next we're going to be talking about maintenance. I mean things like repotting, things like cleaning your plant um, and other things like that. So first we're going to be doing cleaning. Clean, how to clean your lophophora. Now I clean my lophophora when it looks dirty, just as um, most people do. Um, so I, I like to use a paintbrush. This is just a basic um, clean paintbrush you can get from the shops for really cheap. It's just a little plastic paintbrush. Um, so this works really well for cleaning plants. It is. Um, it's just great. You just got to. You know, don't cross-contaminate um, between using it on your plants. So you're just going to take the brush end of the plant, it's pretty basic, and just give it a, a brush. Brush of any extra dust or residue on your plant if you want to. You can sometimes go in the middle and get 
all that dust off. See there? This isn't too much of a dirty plant, so it's not really doing much, but it's just demonstrating. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. Just brush your plant when it looks dirty. Um, also, so what some people do is if you've got a, quite an old plant with long woolly tufts on it, you can get a little paintbrush, not a paintbrush, you can get a little toothbrush, a clean new toothbrush, and just kind of like, just pretend this is a toothbrush, you can kind of like sway it up and um, like curl them around and um, you know, brush out any dirt out of the tufts and keep it in pristine condition, nice and white, woolly tufts all over it. Um, so that's what you're going to want to do for just cleaning, just keep keep it nice and clean. It's a lot better for pests in dirty locations. So if your plant's dirty, it's more at risk of pests and diseases, which is never good. It's never good to have pests and diseases on your plant. It's not fun at all. Also, there's repotting. I repot at the start of the year. Uh, spring, spring, I think, is a good time to repot. Um, I'd do it about a month from now. I'd repot the plants. Um, and you just take out, I like to completely clear the roots of as much soil as possible and examine them. They have thick tuberous roots, um, so it's quite easy to clean off. You can get all the, all the stuff off of them and just check for root mealybugs. I have had a absolute nightmare of amount of root mealybug infestation a while back, and that was completely my fault. Complete my fault for just not taking um, precautions with my plants here. Um, so that leads us on to the next part, which is oh no, wait, we're still doing repotting. You just 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 take it out, level it off, um, chuck some soil on there, just like this. Um, you can leave it a bit higher out of the pot, like this, or you can leave it a bit lower, like they would in the wild, just about up to up to there, so they're literally just poking out, um, it really, it's really up to taste again, um, both ways work pretty well, it, it's really up to personal preference of that one. So now we're going to be, um, leading on to, um, your sanitary conditions, or whatever you want to call it, um, how you want to keep it, keep good practices, keep good, um, you know, safety practices if you will I'm not really sure I've forgotten the word for it uh, you just, just wash your hands I know it sounds really excessive I like to wash my hands between each each plant I touch uh, just in case you don't have to I don't think I've, I'm pretty sure that's just a bit excessive um, but I would like to do that just as a safety precaution then I also like to put them in individual saucers, each plant, or it's individual containers stand their pots on. Um, because in my past um, few years of keeping cacti, past years of keeping them, um, I've had issues with root mealybugs, as I said before. And the last thing you want is one plant with root mealybugs to turn into your whole collection of root mealybugs, which pretty much happened to me. And it was really disheartening when you've spent a long time on your collection and they just all get infestated, all get an infestation of them. So that's why I check the roots and use these sources. If you let a whole tray and water your plant, they will, all the water drains out the bottom. Um, some root mealybugs might as well, which is basically what happened to with mine, with, with what happened with mine. And then all the other plants with the bottom watering soak up all that water and they get a big dose of root mealybug and then it infests that plant and that plant and that plant and that plant so just if you can you can use a bowl a just a purpose dish like this one just use what you can what you what can you find around the house that you can keep that in just make sure it's clean and every time you water your plant just tip out tip out all that um all that water out from the dish. You don't want it soaking right back up into the pot. You don't want it sitting in water. You just want to keep it nice and um, nice and clean. It's really, it's really important that you pay pay attention to that kind of thing. 
you really need to keep it safe and sterilised. Not completely sterilised, just keep it, keep it everything clean. Even your, your counter or whatever, just wherever you're keeping them, keep it reasonably clean. You don't want a dirty place to keep your cacti. It's not good for them. So I think that pretty much sums up um, the basic ways to keep Lophophora. This is just a basic care guide. If you've just got a Lophophora, this should work for you. I really hope it does. And I really wish you good luck with keeping your plants. They're really wonderful. And thank you very much for watching, everybody. And I'll see you again. Bye-bye.